In this lesson, we're going to talk about Linux file system permissions, which is very important to know as a Linux systems administrator. So understanding the file system permissions, you have just three. Uh, it's really read, and that's read only, specified as a lowercase r. And then, of course, you have write, uh, which is write only, and specified as a lowercase w. And then you have execute, and that's, of course, execute only, specified as a lowercase x. So there's three types of permission assignments, and you have the owner or the person who created or owns the file. Then you have the group, which is the users belonging to a specific group. And then you have everybody else, which are all other users that are not the owner or part of the group assigned to that file. So you have two ways to set permissions, and we're going to talk about both of them here. And you have the alphabetic way, denoted as the RWX, as we just discussed. And then we have octal or numeric, which is 0 through 7. So an example of alphabetic, uh, and this is just an example I pulled off my system here. So when you do an ls tac arl, uh, you will have a line that looks like this, multiple lines that look like this where the cursor is. So the very first uh, set of information here to the left specifies your permissions, and then you have your owner and the group, and then of course the file in question. So the very first letter is denoted here in red uh, to the left is the file type, and D specifies a directory. And if this was just a regular dash, that is specifying and that's just a regular file, like a text file or a JPEG or something like that. And if you had a lowercase l that specifies a sim link or otherwise known as a shortcut, you guys are probably familiar with that in the Windows world where you create a shortcut on the desktop and that's just a, a link to the original file location. So the next set of information here you would have are the permissions for the owner of the file or directory, and that's uh, highlighted here in red as well. Then going to the right one more step over, the next set of three would be the permissions for the group that has uh, access to this file. And of course, this is read, write, execute, and it always goes in that way that you can't set uh, write first or execute first. It's always RWX, and that's left to right. So going to the very far right of the permissions column, you have the permissions for all other users that are, of course, not the owner of the file or belong to that group that has access to that file. And, of course, uh, just a regular dash inside of where the permissions are, uh, as denoted up here in the red on this very last example, indicates that the permission bit is not set. So in this case, you would have only, uh, for everybody else, they only have read and execute permissions, but they do not have write permissions, meaning they can't actually change the file or write to the file. So they can read the file or they can execute it if it's an executable file. So going over to Octal, uh, a little bit easier sometimes to use this to set permissions, but not as intuitive as using the alpha or the alphabetic version of setting permissions. And we're going to go into a lesson next uh, on how to set change and do all the permission stuff. So using our uh, example or previous example, um, you can see that octal notation, notation is the more concise but slightly less intuitive way of representing permissions in octal noca notation. Uh, using this method, each permissions category, owner, group, owner, and other, is represented by a number between 0 and 7. So we arrive at the appropriate number by assigning each type of permission a numerical value. And this is going to be the same across the board here. So number 4 equals read permissions, number 2 equals write permissions, and number 1 equals execute permissions. So basically we add up the numbers associated with the type of permissions we would like to grant for each category. And this will be a number between 0 and 7 as we said. 0 representing absolutely no permissions, and 7 representing full read, write, and execute permissions for each category. So for example, if the file owner has read, write, read and write permissions, this would be represented as a 6. So you're basically adding up the, um, the numbers. So read and write was 4 plus 2 equals 6. So of course that's how you arrive at 6 uh, in the file owner's column. If the group owner requires only read permissions, then a 4 can be used to represent their permissions. So now using our above example here towards the bottom, you can see that read, write, execute would be a 7. So that's basically read. 4 plus 2 write and plus 1 execute is 7 and then of course the group would be 7 as well and then the all others would be 5 which is basically 4 plus 1 so read and execute read and execute equals 5
So I hope that made sense to you, and we're going to do some examples in the next lesson on how to actually look at the permissions and how to change them and modify them.